Hi everyone, welcome back to The Watch Insider. My name is Brian and thank you all for logging on. Hi, I'm Tim and welcome back to Watchbox Studios. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. So I'm going to pick another watch. Now here we have, so, you know, have to bring a paddock. So this is a watch that has been around for a long time, but not in this exact configuration. So this is a Paddock Philippe 5396 Rose with the blue dial stick markers. And why I brought this watch on the show is because the 5396 has become a core piece of Paddock Philippe's an annual calendar collection. They've done it both in rose and white gold with a track dial, a stick dial, a, a breguet numeral dial, and then the most recent examples being the rose gold with the blue dial with the sticks and the diamond markers. And what surprised me is that I had originally thought that this watch was going to sort of matriculate out into regular production, would be, would be somewhat accessible, and would just be the next iteration of the watch that you could buy. But, you know, as it turned out, Paddock really clamped down on production of these pieces, and we've really only seen one or two of, of each piece new. So it was really special that we were able to get this one pre-owned. It's really the first one that we've even been offered. And I think that if they don't come out with a, another 5396 and it ends on this note and they transition into a different model, that you're going to see, um, I think, the values of, these, of this particular watch increase. A gorgeous watch, too. Very wearable. And if you're like me and you prefer aperture calendars, this will be right up your alley. Blue and rose is a potent combination. I actually give Patek considerable credit for going with a sunburst here because a sunburst can be difficult to control stylistically. It can often overpower the composition of a watch. Here, it seems more like a perfect complement. Yeah, so I was really surprised because, you know, when they first came out with the watch, I really thought that they were going to be somewhat accessible. And that's really sort of what makes Patek so special is that they really have their pulse, you know, on the production and that they're able to, on a dime, stop and clamp down on the production of a watch. And you really feel a shortage everywhere, you know, worldwide when, you know, when customers are looking for watches and there's just none available anywhere. It's just objectively a good looking watch, guys. I mean, that you, you can't go wrong with the darn thing. It's perfectly sized. It'll fit on any wrist and rose gold can be polarizing, but that combination of rose gold and dial absolutely suits me. I adore that. I yeah. think that's a handsome watch that will look just as good as in 50 years. And you can't say that of all watches from this era. Yeah. So, yeah, so the difference between a new watch, a gray market new watch, yeah. and, so, a, uh, and a pre-owned watch. Yeah, what I was saying basically is that, um, you know, with the new... With the new watch, you know where the watch is coming from, right? right. So that means that yeah. an authorized dealer has been entrusted to sell that watch, and it came directly from the manufacturer. Right. It's from okay. Switzerland to that store to you. Right. So then now it's getting put in the hands of the person who's going to own the watch and then, uh, you know, wear it and enjoy right. it. So the two, where, so two, you know, uh, uh, indicators of a new watch is it came, it's coming from an authorized dealer, okay? So you know where it came from, the provenance, and you know for sure it's new. Right. Right. You know that no one's ever worn this watch. Uh, it hasn't been sold before. The watch is, is, you know, it went literally from Switzerland to the store to you. So obviously. Right. So it has, that's, full, mm -hmm. has a full warranty card, which hasn't been filled out yet. That's the same paperwork you're going to get, you know, directly from the manufacturer. You're not getting some website's card and promise that they're going to take care of you later. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is whenever we're spending this disposable income, the, the idea of the warranty is nice because that manufacturer is guaranteeing their craftsmanship mm -hmm. directly from them because they can guarantee that it went from them to a trusted source to you. Right. Whereas gray market flows through distributors, throws you know one dealer, sells off to another dealer, or, or it's in their case for a while. Oh. Ten people have tried that watch on, and now a year later they can't sell it, so they sell it to the gray market. You just – you have to be – careful and we always talk about gray market whereas if you can't afford to take a loss on that watch or i'm not gonna say you don't care about the watch the away yeah but if you can't afford to really spend the money on that piece then i would buy it new and if it, if you, you're not comfortable doing that then i would go pre-owned for me pre-owned is where you're gonna get all your value so gray well, market is gonna be roughly what 20 percent, 15 percent under retail 
somewhere around there. You're gonna it save depends a couple. On, it, it depends, depends on, on the every, watch. Every different but, but watch. But one of the reoccurring things is I get a lot of guys that'll say, "Well, I can save 500 bucks if I buy at gray market instead of pre-owned." So well, so here let's slow down a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So so new watches guarantees you're the first owner of the watch and guarantees that the 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 brand that you're buying it from will stand behind the watch right. if there's an issue within the warranty period, and that's important because, like sort of what you were just saying, um, the brand that made the watch has the best capabilities of repairing the watch, okay? So if I'm, you know, if I buy the watch with an aftermarket warranty, then, you know, I don't know for sure that the that the people who sold me that watch will have the full capabilities to repair it. Sure. So that's so again, there's it, a little there's so it's levels of risk really, right? right? Obviously you're paying usually, you would assume you're paying the the highest price for the new watch and there's obviously certain certain instances where it's not especially in this market right but so a new watch means guarantees you're the first owner which is important to certain people not as important to others and that's how you have to ask yourself is it important for me to be the first owner then yes then i have to go new is it important for me to have uh, a guaranteed warranty from the brand that made the watch then you should probably go new sammy c asks a question to which we can all relate which is tim what would be your ideal three watch omega collection if you had to choose from current models okay so i got to pick three omegas it's going to be a collection of three definitive as best i can and current, so I can't take anything that's vintage or back catalog. Let's start with the obvious. Okay, Speedmaster Moonwatch CK2998. This is the new model for 2018. You remember the watch from 2016. That one was all blue with a loomed tack. This one features a few cool refinements. We can go full screen on this. This is a watch that features a panda-style dial, a blasted dial finish, and while the tachometer bezel it's not a tack the bezel is still ceramic it's a pulsation scale and the ceramic is inlaid with white enamel panda dial blasted surface alpha hands with an actual biplanar dial a recessed minute track outboard it's got a little bit of a paul newman effect going on here and i love the combination of the panda with the red accents while i love the 2016 original this limited edition of 2998 pieces will probably age better as the proliferation of blueberry watches in the current era will date those watches. This, I think, is going to look just as good in 50 years. So that's an awesome watch. Uh, 39.7 millimeter steel case, straight lug, caliber 1861, the traditional manual wind. Note, sapphire, crystal, not plexiglass. Okay, next. You got to have a Seamaster, and the one to have is the 25th anniversary. This year at Basel World 2018, Seamaster Diver 300 meter. Now 42 millimeters, still a steel case here with the glorious Omega Wave, the Seamaster Wave dial. It is back, but it's back in ceramic. A gorgeous watch now with a spectacular 55 hour power reserve 8800 series coaxial no longer the 2500 that's a lot of watch for the money and you're going to pay 4850 for this one about 6500 for the speedmaster we just saw so we're not breaking the bank. Moving on that watch by the way 25 years young I have the original bond an all-timer. Finally, you do need a watch that's not a Speedmaster or a Seamaster, and I think the best play for today and tomorrow is the Constellation Globemaster in stainless steel with tungsten bezel. I'm going to go with a strap, and I'm going to go with a blue dial. This is the way I would have mine. Now, this is a watch that came out in 2015. It's a master chronometer, so it's got all the latest Metas certified tech. 39 millimeter case with the tungsten carbide fluted bezel. You have something genuinely different. It's six thousand nine hundred dollars as you see it right there and it's original it's elemental gorgeous raw it has the yes it has some vintage elements like the pie pan constellation dial but it's not a reissue it's not a tribute watch it's not a retro watch which is why i think in spite of the blue accents this one's going to age well glorious little constellation observatory marquee on the case back it has a nod to history without being a slave to history and also A gorgeous piece. 39 will wear well forever. Bonus. Here's the bonus. If you want a wild card, you want something that's off the beaten path, this is what you need. You need the new Seamaster Trimetal, dominated by titanium and tantalum. No date. Check that out. Titanium wave dial, Sedna red gold elements. You'll also note a combination of tantalum, which featured on that first 1993 Seamaster 300 series. Used in elements of the bezel and the bracelet. It is a gorgeous tritone. They're making 2,500 of these. No date, 
beautiful, versatile two-tone that I can actually, I can endorse without any assistance from Liquid Courage from Bourbon's Best. This is a watch that costs $13,000, and I don't think you will ever lose on it. A rare two-tone watch that I don't believe will ever be worth less than you pay for it. So, final watch on the table is a watch that I think Tim's probably been talking about for like the last week nonstop. So check my Instagram, Tim underscore Masso. So it is the Blanc Pond X Fathom. So this watch is 55 millimeters, and I, you almost can't even call it a watch. It's 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 a it's an it's a professional instrument. I would I would agree with that characterization. It has a flyback five minute chronograph built in that I just activated, so you can time your decompression stops. 24 millimeters thick on a. I don't know what to call it, a uh, sea monster of a strap, injection molded made of 14 pieces, including metal fixtures. The strap itself features a buckle that looks like it belongs on Game of Thrones as some kind of weapon with a double Ardeon pin and a strap to match. You're absolutely intended to wear this thing over some sort of diving suit, and not necessarily a wetsuit or a dry suit, more like a submersible suit of some kind. If you look at the dial of the watch, it's a classic 50 fathoms hiding underneath there. A lot of folks have asked me, is there a 50 fathoms with Without a date. Your ship has come in, and it's a nuclear missile sub. The watch features two separate depth scales on its dial. One is 0 to 15 with a 30 centimeter resolution. The other is actually 0 to 90, and it features a memory function so you know the deepest part of your dive. Once you're surfacing, you can actually use that for decompression purposes. It features a bezel that is unidirectional rotating, and it has a report like a Browning automatic rifle. Even better, the bezel is sapphire capped like the standard 50 fathoms. It's a five day power reserve, automatic winding, 300 meter water resistant. It features a mesh that covers a helium escape valve on the crown side, silicon hairspring, free sprung escapement. You're getting all the toys with this watch. And again, purists, there's no date. The most sensational thing about this watch, you need to check my Instagram, Tim underscore Masso, for the loom shot of this watch. Let me get this Everything thing on the wrist. is loomed. So, and one of the- Everything. What I, when I first saw this watch, one of the craziest things about it was just how wearable it was, given the under, it's not called an under, like undercarriage would be on a car. What would the term be for a watch? For the underside of the watch? The underside of the watch. Just the case back, the case back profile. So, is that, it's actually, I mean, I mean, it's huge on the wrist, but it actually fits comfortably. It has no lugs. Like, it is a round yeah. case. The strap is a fixture that's attached, and there is really no lug structure to which it's attached. It's just bolted to the case. Now, if you want to see what this watch looks like, here's the loom shot on my Instagram page. Literally every part of that dial is loomed. It's ridiculous. No part of this is tritium powered. No part of this is electrically powered. That's just the Luminova on the dial. It lit up my entire room. Absolutely ridiculous. You need to check this darn thing because it's probably the most aggressively ambitious concept watch that's ever been brought to life in the dive category. I can't think of another diver that costs $40,000 new and isn't precious metal. Yeah, I mean this thing is crazy, but it but it fits. That's what's that that's what's insane about it is that it fits your wrist better than the big pilot fits. So gray market creates some some, some you know uh, there's a little bit of risk, but the reward would be a lower price, right? So when you say I can buy the watch for five hundred dollars less, gray market new, against truly new, I would say you it's better to compare the watch gray market new to pre owned. A hundred percent. Right. That's those prices are, are should be closer together right. than than true yeah, new. There should be a true gap between true new and gray market and pre owned. Right. And gray yeah, market gray being in the middle, closer but much closer together. Yeah. So uh, a lot of times, um, you know, so whenever you see a, a website like you know, like we mentioned before, I'm gonna keep throwing their name out there, but um, that says something is new, they are not an authorized dealer for that watch. The watch cannot be new. Might be an unworn condition. Right. Might be what a lot of people will call new. But if it doesn't come from a brand, from a, a name that's on that dealer's website, mm -hmm. on that authorized manufacturer's website, mm -hmm. they're not an authorized dealer and that watch is not new. Right. It's it's, it's so, gray market. Again, it, and it certainly could be unworn. It could it certainly could have been unsold to or it could have been sold directly to the gray market dealer from maybe backdoor or overseas or whatever. But again... It's not going to be backed. You're not going to get a warranty card from the brand, so it's not going to be backed by them. So 
what we were talking about this before. If you're going to buy a watch from a gray market source, which I personally have before, right, just make sure that you can afford to pay the service cost if there's an issue with the watch, right? Yeah, 100%. that's that's basically how I look at it. So you know, uh, say throw out a number like don't. I personally wouldn't spend more than say five thousand dollars on a gray market watch because if I'm spending more than that, usually the the service cost right. is going to be and then on top of that, think of think of what's going to happen when a brand has the infrastructure to take in a repair, send it back to the to the manufacturer, or send it back to the factory, and fix the watch, right? They've mm-hmm. invested millions and millions of dollars into that infrastructure to have the factory that manufactures the piece, whereas opposed to saving $1,000 or $500 on the piece, and now you're dealing with a middleman who technically is not supposed to be selling the product anyways. And well, according to are, the brand. According to the brand. I mean, right. the brand makes the rules. So as an authorized dealer, we f- we have to follow those rules. Sure. When you're a gray market, you don't have to follow those rules. So, so what yeah, happens there's no now? standards. Who do you speak to? You, if you go to the brand, they're going to say, we can send it back, but it's obviously going to cost you because you don't have a factory warranty, right? Mm-hmm. Or a lot of times, some brands will say, sorry, we can't take it because you didn't buy it from an authorized dealer. Then you're stuck dealing with the middleman, and do they have a watchmaker? Probably not. Do they have one that I would want in my watch? Probably not. So where are you at? Right. So, so somebody in the in the chat box just said, uh, he goes, it's not a satellite you're buying. Uh, the world is full of people that can surface it. Okay. So what does that mean? So if I'm buying, if I'm buying a Mercedes, mm-hmm. right? Say I'm spending eighty five thousand dollars on a Mercedes, okay, and it has an issue. Do I want them? Do I want to take it to a place that will use Mercedes parts and and is being held accountable by the brand Mercedes itself? For using the Mercedes parts, or do I want to take it to somebody who's going to use aftermarket parts? Both guys might be able to get it r- running, so far as I can tell. But there's a re- there's a difference between buying, getting Mercedes parts, and getting aftermarket parts. And for the most part, everybody I know wants the wants it to be repaired with Mercedes parts.